All right, welcome back everybody to the world's worst fishing. I'm Chris Jones. Thank y'all so much for being here today, taking time out of your schedules. So, uh, wow, we recently just hit 70,000 subscribers. Huge thank you to everyone. Let's keep going, let's get to 100. And before we do that, um, I wanted to do something pretty crazy. So a couple of videos ago, I introduced um, some new molds to my collection, my personal collection and they were panfish grub molds, okay? And somebody actually suggested that I do this in the comments, but I was gonna do it anyway. They wanna see a one gallon challenge panfish grub style, okay? So we're taking a full gallon of plastic and seeing how many panfish lures we can get. And of course, you know, panfish lures are teeny tiny. One cup of plastic can make a ton of stuff. Let's see what an entire one gallon of plastic can do. I'm going to estimate like well over a thousand grubs. Um, so I don't know. We'll see. But uh, what we're going to do is we're going to hop on the table real fast. I'm going to I'm going to show you a few hand pours that I've been doing recently um, just to keep you all uh, in the loop on some cool hand pours that I've been doing. And then we're going to take a look at the molds that we're going to be using today. And uh, we've got our plastic already cooking up. This is going to be huge. It's going to be fun. I think it's going to be a fun video to watch. Like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and let's get started. Yeah, so real quick, before we get started on today's video, I want to show y'all some recent hand pours. So this is one of my favorite patterns right here. And if you look at that eyeball there, that's the Jetson crappie eye. And you can see this color is pretty much matching that eyeball. So it's not really a crappie pattern, but because the eyes are crappie eyes, I said, hey, I'm just gonna call this like chartreuse crappie. And so I have some, some nice black striping, some chartreuse striping, and then you can see I've filled in those layers with some light brown. I've put some gray silver up in the head, and it really, really matches that eyeball well. Next up, this is more of like my um, orange belly sunfish, but just a different take on it. You can see a similar approach with the browns. I, I really filled in some layers with the browns. We have some nice blue pearl to go on with that black striping, a nice orange throat there. That's the Jetson, oh, blue squid eye. Yeah, really pretty pattern there. And then uh, this is this is kind of fun. This is like a gold foil orange throat bluegill right here. Um, so basically this is capsuled. The gold foil or leafing as you can call it is placed in there by hand. And uh, it's sort of random, but it's sort of a pattern. And then I've hand poured a few layers behind that. You can see the, that black and green behind that leafing and then the orange throats. That's a Jetson Spectrum eye. So three, uh, three very different pours and uh, I think they're super cool. So just wanted to show you all some of the high end stuff that we've been working on lately. Just a quick shout out to uh, Fishing All Out. They're, they're the guys who uh, make my air vice. You can find him on Facebook. I believe he's also on Instagram make some really great air vices, and we are working on an awesome project collaborating together that we're gonna be bringing to market soon. Should be a lot of fun. And uh, anyway, just wanted to give a quick shout out to Fishing All Out. They provided me this awesome uh, tool, the air vice, and uh, I've, been, I've been enjoying it very much. Our weapon of choice today is Dead On Plastics Plastisol, of course, the only plastic we use here on the world's worst fishing. And uh, we're going to be using the black bucket, which is the sinking plastic in the swim bait blend. And so I have my oh, I have my gallon of it here, and it's like just starting to get in the gel phase. And uh, we're starting to see a little bit of mixing bubbles show up. Those will actually just burn out as the plastic reaches full temp. And uh, again, the molds today are from Angling AI. So shout out to them. Those two are my, uh, you know, my title sponsors for the channel. Couldn't do what I do without them. And uh, we're about to fire up the vice. And uh, once this plastic is ready, we're just going to be running a very, very simple color, probably like just a regular chartreuse or maybe even chartreuse pepper with some flake. All right, so let's take a look at our plastic. You can see quite a bit of surface bubbles there. And um, I want to actually kind of show you all a little trick. You can actually just take a spoon and just start spooning your bubbles out, you know, just spoon them out into another Pyrex. And that will kind of let you um, kind of skim that top layer of bubbles you know I find that whenever I'm cooking plastic in the pot you know I usually transfer it straight from the bucket to the pot so it doesn't go in the vac ever like at any point during the process so if your plastic is like mine 
and it sits in a uh, garage that's, that's going to have temperature fluctuations and uh, particularly in Florida with lots of rain and humidity, just moisture getting in here. You know, you're going you're gonna to have these bubbles that are going to cook off, right? So I could just kind of wait for these bubbles to cook off, but you can kind of scoop some of it out and at least just get that top layer off because what happens is that top layer, you know, those bubbles will cook to the top, but then they'll kind of thicken up on the top and you just kind of want to get those out. All right, things are looking a lot more clear now. The plastic is pretty much up to full temp, so we're gonna bump this pot back down to about, oops, 350. And uh, once we kind of stir in this color, it might stir in a few more bubbles, but that's okay. Chartreuse, baby. This has become my favorite chartreuse, the dead-on chartreuse. Just the regular chartreuse. They have the char lime and a couple other variants. This right here um, is one of my favorites. And, and it is my favorite for just regular chartreuse. Now, if I want something that's, um, you know, thicker and has a little bit more green to it, then obviously the char lime is, oops, is the way that we want to go. But I actually want this to be a pretty translucent, transparent color. I don't want this to be very opaque. And that's one of the things I like about this color you can get that see-through look about it. It's not a super opaque pigment to begin with. So, yeah, we're gonna stir that in and then just kind of do the drizzle test on the table and just kind of see how much of this we think we want. Maybe just a little bit more. <clears throat> and that's probably good. And instead of chartreuse pepper with black flake, we're gonna add a bunch of small silver flake to it. I think that'll look pretty dang sweet. So, just gonna be a real bright, sparkly color. Oh yeah, baby. That's <laughs> gonna be sick. That's gonna be cool. Hopefully. There's no guarantees. All right. Yeah, there's never any certainty that your color is gonna look good, only probability. All right, let's do it. We're gonna try to get away with just this six ounce injector. So uh, this is just a six ouncer from a uh, quality injector right there. And uh, let's go ahead. Awesome sauce, get that thing closed up and here we go. The one gallon panfish mold challenge has begun. Okay, perfect. I always want to try to use the injector that's sized for the job. You know, I have some 10 ounces, I think a 9 ounce, and then the Mondos. I wouldn't really want to use either of those for molds that don't need that much plastic essentially. Drum roll please. Let's see how these look. My guess is they're going to look like chartreuse grubs, but you know, I guess we could be surprised and they'll turn out June bug instead. Oh yeah. These are the uh, twin tails. <laughs> Yeah, okay, that color works just fine. This is a color that I've actually used. I mean, this is like Panfish Color 101 here. So if you're looking for like awesome color inspiration, this is probably not my best video for that. This is just a fun challenge video. Yeah, kind of like the remelt challenges. Look at this. It's bright. No doubt about it, yeah. Awesome, awesome. So yeah, there is one run of the Twin Tails in this color. Yeah, that plastic already feels great. Not much tack to it. It's setting up really quick. Yeah, that feels good. That's when you know you really cooked it thoroughly. Alrighty, so we're gonna <clears throat> set that down. Let's get one of the other ones out. This is going to be the uh, 
the one and a half, or uh, sorry, the two inch, I believe. Come on. Yeah. Looking good there. And then we'll get the, uh, the two and a half just to get them all out real fast. And then we gotta keep moving because this did not make, oh, party foul. This did not make a dent in all of this plastic, but there you go. Speckle perch beware. All right, here's the cool part. All right, here we go again. All right, and here is the second round. Those are the strings of them there. That's crazy, that's just one run of these grubs. And that's, I mean, probably 60 or so, at least 50 grubs right there. Awesome, awesome, look at that, y'all. Super cool. It's like a necklace of grubs. All right, a little close-up angle here. Yeah, right up there, up close, and in the action. Yeah. Just in time. All right, let's check to see how some of the ones on this round did. Let's get these out. Not sure which ones these are. Okay, the twin tails. Yeah. Looking good, looking good there. Super awesome. We'll get out these, um, <clears throat> see this is gonna be the two and a half single here. Yeah. Boy, that's pretty the way they line up in that mold. Yes, sir. Come on. All right. Awesome, awesome. We're gonna keep going. We'll, we'll probably do a couple rounds off camera Meet y'all back once we've started making a dent in this plastic. All right, mind the laundry noise, please. But here's what we have so far. I've just got them kind of hanging over the bar here on this dolly just to kind of string them up. Holy cow. It's like a sea of grubs. All right, everybody. Here's where we're at. We've made a little bit of a dent. So we have taken this pot from here to there so about two inches of change so we're still a little bit less than halfway through this thing and uh, here we just have kind of a leftover cup just from the injector plugs and things like that so um, still quite a bit of remelt that we'll have but uh, holy cow we have opened and closed these molds a ton but we're still going baby all right, this is round, uh, I lost count, here we go. Y'all wanna know something awesome? We have reached the halfway point through that pot. Boom, baby. I can see the finish line now, and I'll tell you, it looks like a ton of grubs. Yeah, look at this. Halfway, baby, half freaking way so yeah we're still looking really good here the flake still looks good the color looks good there's been no change as far as like degrading of the resin so sometimes when your plastic is starting to scorch it's starting to kind of burn up a little bit it will change colors um, you know one good thing about the pot here is that you can maintain temperature you're not constantly running it through a microwave so you can kind of prolong the working life of your, of your plastic here. So yeah, we are looking good. And uh, we're gonna keep keeping on till we have more grubs than we can count. Man, water break. I tell you, I'm all grubbed out. And we still have a long way to go. 
Uh, you can see a few hanging out down there on the table. And um, <clears throat> we remelted um, that uh, remelt cup from the uh, injector pl uh, plugs. And that was about two more cups of plastic added back to the pot. Actually, actually it was a little over two cups. So that, um, that added a significant portion of plastic back to the pot that we now have to cycle back through. But we are getting there. That's the good news. This is crazy. We have so many, gr I, I, I'm gonna guess right now, it'll be over 2,000, I think. I, I have not kept count of how many runs I've done or how many rounds. So I'm literally just throwing that number out of nowhere but I think it's gonna be a ton. All right guys, so we are interrupting our scheduled program. I ran into fishing with Norm. Hello, Hi, yeah, yeah, hopefully he and I are gonna film some stuff soon. Yeah. So this is Lake Jackson here in Tallahassee. It's a eutrophic lake and it's on like a couple of sinkholes. One of the sinkholes just opened up, so the lake is literally disappearing while we're watching this and we're gonna walk around and see if we can get to the sinkhole. It's literally like a giant crater in the bottom and we're just gonna see if we can have some fun. I don't know that we'll catch fish or not because the sheriff department has like the sinkhole blocked off where you can actually access it from the road. So we're gonna go for a hike and see what happens. We got Happy Jack, Fishing with Norm, should be fun. All right, so this is the Lake Jackson Lake Bottom. There's Thelma. And oh my God, we've been walking forever. But we're gonna try to find a little pocket of water, like over there, that has some fish. Whoa, big feather. Okay, everybody, so I actually wound up catching a pretty decent fish out there, and you can see the lake bottom. Like, we were walking in that kind of just muck, dry lake bottom there, but, but you can see a, a pretty good fish, and um, the reason why I don't have like actual camera footage of it is because the mud got so bad that we were sinking down to our knees, and before we got too deep in that, I had to like run back to dry land and put my camera down because I wasn't gonna be able to hold this camera and fish. There were a couple people there, so I thought I might have somebody like run my camera, but I just didn't wanna run the risk of ruining this camera. So again, I guess I just need to get a GoPro. But the footage of me catching that fish will be on, I, I believe, in one of Norm's videos whenever his video from that day comes out. Um, as it turns out, the actual sinkhole where like the cavern in the lake bottom is was blocked off by law enforcement. We thought they were just trying to keep rednecks like us out. Turns out it was an active murder scene. They found two human skulls down there in the sinkhole. So, uh, wow, what a crazy day. But uh, anyway, you can see that we're back continuing our one gallon challenge. Look at this mound of grubs, okay? And here's how much we had left in the bottom of the pot. So I have this giant puck of plastic, and instead of trying to put that back in the pot, I'm gonna chop it up and put as much of it in this big cup as I can, and I'm gonna continue running these molds. I probably won't show you a lot of that because we've already looked at a lot of injection rounds. Um, so basically my goal today, my goal right now, is to finish this up, and then we're gonna tally these up, and I think it's gonna be super awesome. Yeah, this is like a mega cup of plastic here, so. We'll probably have to put this in for quite a while. We're just gonna start it at like seven minutes. And uh, once that's all like actually done, we'll meet y'all back a little bit later once I have things up and running. All right, so there is what we got um, from that giant uh, Presto Pot puck um, left over a plastic. You know, normally when we have a puck, it's just whatever's in the bottom of a cup. So here is the total amount of leftover from this run, okay? A gallon of plastic reduced to that. You know, just a few little messes that I cleaned up, you know, I threw away. But um, we pretty much ran this entire gallon. Only the runners remain. Um, but I mean, yeah, look at this. It's really cool, you can just pick them up. A giant string of uh, grubs there. So uh, yeah, I thought it was really cool that just that remainder I got all of this stuff right here. I mean, this is, I don't have to tell you how many grubs that is. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to arrange all of them, okay? I still have this giant, um, I was gonna say puddle, but pile of grubs over there. So we're gonna arrange them kinda as you see here um, by type, 
and then we'll tally these up. All right, everyone, look. <laughs> this is one of the craziest sights we've ever had on the world's worst fishing shop table here. Look at this just absolute, just sea of chartreuse grubs. And we have the mold behind each one here to represent which, uh, which one each bait is, which mold it is. So these are the uh, two inch uh, single tail, the 2.5 inch single tail, and then the two inch twin tail. So, question of the day, maybe question of the year on this channel. Can anyone guess how many grubs we have here? How many grubs do you think this is? I think earlier in the video I said it was going to be 2,000 or maybe 2,000 or at least 2,000. I don't remember exactly what I said, but my guess was the 2,000 range. How many do you think that we have? Well, let's find out. I've already tallied each individual kind. So this is a 20 cavity. This is a 16 cavity. This is a 20 cavity. Based on the amount of runners from each, we have 500, okay, of just those. That's 500 single tail two inch grubs. The 16 cavity 2.5, we have 416 of those. And then 520 of those. So the grand total is 1,436, so just over 1,400 grubs. That ain't bad. Now, that's without the runners being remelted. There is so much more material here that you could then remelt. So I probably wasn't too far off when I said that a full gallon, you know, and obviously this is three different grubs. They all use a little bit different amounts of plastic. But all in all, I would say, if you remelted the sprues and all the runners, you could probably hit that 2000 mark. So I don't think I was too far off. Um, however, uh, I thought that was what I was gonna get um, myself, not remelting runners. However, now that I see that this is 1400 grubs, I feel like if you did remelt all of the runners, you would hit that, uh, that 2000. So holy moly now we have to figure out what to do with all these things but uh anyway what an awesome challenge what an awesome experience um awesome molds if you haven't checked them out angling ai molds of course and um yeah what what an awesome thing hopefully the uh panfish and crappy fishermen of the world will appreciate something like this all right everybody i mean look at that that's just one big handful right man so awesome so anyway hope y'all have enjoyed this video like i said i've got 1400 grubs here um so be on the lookout for uh some giveaways i'm not sure how i'm gonna do it um i might literally just say the first person to dm me gets 500 grubs i i, I honestly don't know i'm not really sure how i'm gonna uh, handle this but um anyway we will be um sending these out amongst the world uh, you know, I certainly uh, don't need this many, and uh, I know some of you would probably really like to have some free baits. Who doesn't? So anyway, awesome, uh, awesome experience. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. This was definitely a crazy one. Won't be doing this every time, that's for sure. But uh, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, tell your friends. We want to keep growing the channel. Thanks to everyone for getting us to 70,000, and um, let's keep it going.